Thanks for staying with us. Now, preventive health care deals with the prevention of illness to disease, the burden of disease, and associated risk factors. Preventive measures can be applied at all stages across the lifespan and along a disease spectrum to prevent further decline over time. Health promotion is the process of empowering people to increase control over their health. Now, health promotion usually addresses behavioral risk factors such as tobacco use, obesity, diet, and physical inactivity, as well as the areas of mental health, injury prevention, drug abuse control, alcohol control, health behavior related to HIV and sexual health. How well do young people pay attention to their health? So they want to focus on young people because we know at least a little bit of older people, you know, these days, you know, by the time you get to like 40, 45, you know, you start to pay attention, visit the doctors. Yeah. But these days we've seen that young people from 20, 30, 40, we see that, you know, there are a lot more cases being reported of, you know, ailments, you know, coming at a young age. So please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Ways to Africa 1 with the hashtag Ways Show or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 So we're going to start with the conversation before we bring in um, Dr. Neso Chin in a, in a short bit. I just wanted to ask you, um, as our young supermodel, uh, in her 20s, how many of you young people, we were in our 30s, so we're yeah. we not too far mm -hmm. from each other. Mm -hmm. No, okay, aunties are in our 40s, we're in our 30s. Yeah. So we have three, the three complete generations here, yes. or the three complete uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. area of focus here. What exactly is, you know, uh, when we talk about health, preventive health, right, how conscious are the young people these days? You know, I know you are a food blogger. Yeah. You do a lot of um, healthy food. I've seen lovely pictures on, you know, like very, um, yeah. I'm waiting for when you take me out, you know, dining and all of that. So what exactly, I mean, when you talk about preventive health, how, how aware are the young people today, especially people in their 20s, yeah. how aware are they, you know, about um, taking care of themselves? Taking care of themselves. You know? Um, personally, um, I feel like they are aware, but the problem is implementing it. Hmm. For me, I can only speak for myself. Um, I grew up in a family where my dad or my parents took health very serious. If you cough... <laughs> <laughs> in the hospital. <laughs> yeah, in the hospital. <laughs> or maybe you've had headache, you've complained of headache twice. Mm. My dad will tell you, go to the hospital and do a checkup. Check for everything. Fever, typhoid, whatever. Do all the necessary tests. Mm. So that's for me. So for me, growing up, even in uni, I, whenever I had any issue, I was always in the health center. I was always going to check. And some of my friends would be like, why are you always going? Mm. So I feel like for some people, or especially those within my age um, group, it's not like they're not aware. They are aware. But they just hate the fact that they have to go to the hospital. Probably because they are scared of what the outcome might Maybe. be. And then I tell people, no matter the outcome, it's better you face it now than much later. Mm. Because if you have to wait for that long, it might get worse. So for some people, they are aware of it, they implement it, but for others, they don't. But majority of them do not. Wow. The majority of them do not. Wow. How about you, EC? Oh. <laughs> I have never How conscious, any... first of all, are you of your health? And, you know, your age range, do you, I mean, your age group, do you, do you see people, you know, going to pay, I mean, to hospitals and all of that? Yes, I do. Mm. But for me, personally, I don't have to. Because I think, based on my height, I have been blessed with a very, um, you know, stress-free health issue. I don't have any issues concerning my health. And for individuals, by the time you get to your 40s, you find people saying, oh, um, I have to go to the doctors, or I have hypertension. And it still comes back to your lifestyle. Lifestyle, to me, plays a huge role on um what actually affects you by the time you hit 40. Mm -hmm. yes okay well, you know they say something say sickness mm -hmm. not a show for face <laughs> <laughs> true, true. and especially no it's true because true. especially with covid 19. covid yes. 19 i can be covid 19 positive right now both yeah. of you will not know that i'm positive and true. it's not it's not I, it's not I, I agree you know no mm -hmm. I, you know why i'm saying this mm -hmm. is because i've seen time and time again mm -hmm. that people just say oh no 
Um, no, personally, I, I have really not had any reason to lie my back on the hospital bed, especially uh, except for the two times I've had, had to have to to the um, my babies in the hospitals. That's mm -hmm. the only time that I have visited a hospital. Mm -hmm. You know, but I would like to bring in Dr. Niso Chi. She is our supermodel medical doctor. practitioner, <laughs> a medical doctor with, you know, swag <laughs> practicing in the U.S. And she's the friend of the house and she's joined this conversation via Zoom. So I, I'm bringing her very early because I want her to have, you know, the first, um, first of all, I want her to speak to um, the virus um, appreciation day because why I'm bringing in Dr. Nesochi is, um, you know, what Isi just said. I mean, okay, because I'm blessed with the height and all of that. It's, it's something that a lot of people say. Yes. Well, I'm blessed yeah. with the good health and all of that. Mm -hmm. Is it enough to say because I'm blessed with this, I shouldn't check up, sure, I shouldn't yeah. do this, or I should just, no, yes, I'm, it's wait now, it's a question. It's not you I'm asking anymore. I'm asking Dr. Nesochi. Are you there, Dr. Nesochi? Welcome to the show. <laughs> So you heard the question. So I'm saying that. Is it enough for us to just say, you know what? I look so good. I think I'm healthy. I'm fit. When I go to the gym, I do 1,000 push-ups and I'm, I'm strong and healthy. Is that enough reason to say, you know what? I'm not doing any health checks because I feel strong? That is absolutely not enough. And let me tell you why it's not enough. Um, there are things that are going on internally in the body that you may not be aware of, or you may not see that manifest based on what is actually going on internally. In Nigeria, unfortunately, there is not an emphasis in what we call preventive health. These are strategies that are going to help everyone in preventing certain illnesses and diseases that are gonna make things worse for your body as you get older and older. So, I mean, I'm gonna go through step by step various um, prevention uh, methods and screenings that should be done in various decades of your life. Um, but I do want to touch upon uh, virus appreciation day first before we delve into yes, that. Quickly. It I wanted you to touch on that. And we need to take appreciation for what we know about viruses now and where we're going in the future with uh, viruses and just taking care of our bodies and ourselves uh, in general. Okay. So one thing that I wanted to know, um, in regards to viruses, there are more viruses in the world than there are stars in the universe, oh, believe wow. that or not. Um, scientists believe there are about 10 to the 31st power of viruses in on Earth right now. Okay. Dr. Nesuchi, not I need all you to of repeat. these viruses. No, no, no. Hold on. Repeat mm. that again. You say what? Mm. What did you just say? There are more viruses that exist than stars in the universe. Wow. There are 10 to the, this is an estimate from scientists. There are 10 to the 31st power viruses that are out there. Hmm. However, not all these viruses affect human beings. Only a small percentage of um, all the viruses that exist will actually um, affect human beings. But what do we need to know about viruses in general? Because there are some misconceptions about what viruses actually are. Okay, so viruses are these microorganisms that are invisible to the human eye. So it's not something that you can see. So you can't look at somebody and just say, oh, hey, this person has X, Y, or Z virus. These are microorganisms that are just not visible to everyone. These um, viruses, they contain a core made out of um, DNA or RNA, and it's usually surrounded by a protein called a capsid. Now, what the virus is able to do is latch on to a living organism. Mm -hmm. So, for example, humans, they look for a host where they're, going, where they're going to infect that host and begin to replicate. So when that virus comes into the human body, it attacks the host and it just continues to replicate and it can harm the body in various ways, depending on what kind of um, virus we are dealing with. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Dr. Nesochi. We're with you. Okay. So, okay. So just in regards to all these uh, viruses that are out there, the mechanism in which the viruses can infect a human being it varies depending on what kind of virus it is. So some viruses are transmitted through 
um, through uh, sexual transmission, through sexual intercourse, things, uh, viruses kind of like HIV, those are the viruses that one can um, get through sexual exchange, exchange of those bodily fluids with uh, sexual intercourse. Mm. There are other viruses um, that we're, we, are no, we know about, such as the respiratory viruses mm. that we can uh, get when somebody is infected and it's transmitted through respiratory droplets. Like the there are other viruses that one can come in contact to, contact with. Um, sometimes when you ingest something, it can cause a gastrointestinal viral infection. So depending on the virus, um, it, it really depends on what kind of virus we're dealing with, with, what kind of symptoms are going to manifest. So the hot topic right now, obviously, is COVID-19. COVID <laughs> it is caused by SARS-CoV-2. That is the virus that actually causes the disease called COVID-19. So what this virus is doing, like I explained, the virus is looking for a host. So right now, human beings, we are that host. So the virus is looking for a host that it's going to latch onto. It latches onto the host, it gets into the body, invades the body, and just begins to replicate, replicate, replicate all of these viral cells throughout the body. And this is what's getting people sick. So what your body is trying to do when it comes in contact with this virus and it's replicating in the body it's trying to mount this immune response. It's trying to fight it off. It is trying to attack all those uh, viral particles that are really causing harm. And with that, what can manifest? You can manifest symptoms of fever. You can manifest symptoms of cough. You can manifest all types of various symptoms uh, just based on this uh, virus. So where are we really now? If you recall, when I spoke with you um, in person when I was in Nigeria the last time, that was when COVID was started, first yeah. beginning to spur up worldwide. I think it was about February I was Absolutely, in your studio yes. and we were talking about you know tips for prevention because guess what? There is no cure for COVID-19 at this time. Months later, fast forward, we're here. There is still no cure. So we're waiting we for a vaccination, the but the preventive measures that we talked about back then Still we still need to adhere to them now. So one thing that we talk about when we're talking about prevention control in regards to viruses in particular mm. are hand hygiene practices and with COVID wearing of the masks. Yeah. So I've been hearing some things that in Nigeria, I mean, not everyone <laughs> right now is still wearing masks outside when they're in public. And that's something that definitely needs to happen. It just needs to be a part of the culture right now that everyone still wears masks to reduce that transmission of uh, the coronavirus. Mm. If that's not happening, there are going to be more cases. Absolutely. There are not as clearly many, as many cases in Nigeria as there are in the U.S., but we don't want any more deaths from this illness. And there are simple strategies, just like wearing a face mask, that can really help. Okay. And if you are wearing the face mask, please do it properly. That's another thing well, the mask Dr. must Nisochi. cover the nose you know the the, you know this is like all sounding like a broken record right now because we have talked about this mm -hmm. preventive measure yeah. forever and ever and it seems like it's mm -hmm. falling on deaf ears but you know what because we yeah. run we would we, you know it's i mean it's always uh, we always have little time when we are having fun with you we would like to also now um, you know let us let us deal with um preventive health you know for people especially because i was listening to inkechi you know, she's in her 20s. Mm. I'm in my 30s. This is in her 40s. And mm. the truth is, um, COVID-19 has brought some level of awareness for us. Right? Exactly. I don't know to what measure. It depends on whether we have existing pre-existing pre health conditions. Mm -hmm. But it has brought some level of health awareness for us. So if we were to say, you know what, let's keep COVID aside. What exactly mm. are the healthy ways to, to, um, to I mean, healthy habits to, to start to sure. practice, right, to keep mm. our health in check. So we do not even get okay. to that stage where we are battling with our lives, you know, at a very young age, and we start to lose people at early age. We hear life expectancy in Nigeria is about 50-something. That's very, very sad. Yeah. yeah. So what, what should we start to do? Okay. And the reason, I believe, that contributes to some of that lower life expectancy 
there is not that focus on primary preventive health. Now, I think it was good that we started off with Virus Appreciation Day because any virus, guess what, likes to target anyone who is immunocompromised, anyone who is not healthy and their health has not been optimized. How do you optimize your health at various stages in your life? First things first, you need to go get a physical with your doctor, okay? Mm -hmm. In your 20s and 30s, there are a few things in regards to just screening measures that both men and women should be doing that they, that some people just are not doing. One thing is just starting off is a simple blood pressure check. Mm. There are so many people, even in Nigeria, just walking around, they're, they're just walking time bombs, taking time bombs, not aware that they have issues with high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a, the one good thing that you need to do at your next physical the doctor will do a blood pressure check to make sure those readings are not elevated another thing that needs to be done is blood work there are certain things that can be checked just as screening metrics to make sure that your health is in check one important um, piece of blood work that not everyone does but really should be done even starting in your 20s and 30s is a screening for diabetes now not everyone um, has been screened for diabetes and just a simple blood test. It's called a hemoglobin A1C. This is something that really should be checked. This is about a three month average of your blood sugars. It lets you know how well this regulation is. Any number that is above 6.4% when they do the simple blood test, that is indicative of a diagnosis of diabetes. The issue is that many a time people um, that aren't getting screened for any of these things, it's, it's basically not taught until it is way too late. late. And at that time, it's in advanced stages that we're not really able to get a hold of the disease state. So if, if um, these diseases are screened at an earlier stage in life, it is better to catch it early and know how to move forward in treatment of these things. Another thing that needs to be done starting in the 20s and 30s just screening for sexually transmitted infections. If you are somebody who is sexually active, you should be screened for HIV if you are somebody that is sexually active annually. This is absolutely important, but not everyone does that. So with these, with these um, annual physicals that you're doing starting in that age, age range, these are things that are gonna benefit you and help you moving forward. Now I'm talking about the 20s and 30s as well. Okay, when we're speaking specifically about women, how many women are getting pap smears with their doctors starting in their 20s? The recommendation really is starting from the age of 21, every three years, every three to five years, a woman should be getting a pap smear. This is a tool to help to screen for cervical cancer. Yeah. A lot of the times with these diagnosis, diagnoses of these cancers, Again, it's not hot until later stages. Mm. Okay, so okay, that's 20s what, and 30s for female women's health. Sorry, well, just to cut you a bit, we'll go on a very short break. When we return, we'll continue the conversation. Sure. I'm sure Isi and uh, Ikechidi are dying to ask you some <laughs> questions, so please stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 